Okay, I'm so excited that I can finally tell you about the biggest project of my career so far. The company that I work for is rebranding from ConvertKit to Kit and as creative director, I'm leading the charge on a lot of areas, including research, choosing an agency, planning the strategy, even helping our CEO to write his keynote announcing the change. And I wanna tell you all about it, including why I cried at this moment. ConvertKit is become a kit. So let's settle in and roll back to November 2023, where this story begins. So in November last year, I flew to New York to meet up with the rest of the ConvertKit growth leadership team for a few days of strategy sessions. It was really fun. We spent uh, a few days in 368, which is Casey Neistat's creator space on Broadway. In one of the sessions, we talked about an opportunity that had come up to purchase the domain kit.com, which would enable us to change our company name to Kit. This is something that we had been interested in doing for years, Kit specifically, but also Nathan has seen a need for us to change the name of our company from very early on. I actually remember it being something that we discussed in my first interview even, which was back in 2016. So it's been going on for a while. <laughs> and that's because as a name, ConvertKit isn't very easy to say or understand if you haven't heard of us before, which makes it harder to grow as a brand. It's also very technical sounding, which puts people off. And we've heard from some creators that they really don't like having a form that says ConvertKit on it because they don't want their audience signing up to think they only care about converting them. We've had these criteria for what we wanted in a new name. And what we talked about in New York was that we think Kit checks all of these boxes. We offer creators a kit of tools to help them earn a living and run their creator business. Plus it's already part of our name. So it'd feel like a natural evolution rather than something completely different. And then separately to the domain becoming available, we had already planned in our strategy for 2024 to do a brand evolution. Our brand identity was quite frankly, getting a bit tired and stale and really not standing out enough in the market. Plus our product had changed a lot over the last few years. And we were just seeing a need to show up differently to better represent it and the value that it offers. So these two things combined showed us that this was an opportunity that we should seriously consider. My first thought though, of course, was how would creators react to this? So I said to Nathan, okay, before we buy this domain, let me go do some research. And so in January, I hopped on calls with a bunch of creators and I used it as an opportunity to do some general brand research, but also to hear what their perceptions were of the word kit with very little context. And of course, I also asked them what they thought about the idea of us changing our name to kit. I'll be honest here, not all of them were into the idea, but enough of them were, and we didn't uncover any like negative connotations of the word kit that would mean we shouldn't do this. And so we went ahead, we bought the domain and we decided to become kit. The next step was telling our team and we decided to do this at our February team retreat in Mexico. Now at the start of every retreat, Nathan gives a talk that's about like the state of the business, the vision for the next five years and what we're gonna be doing to move towards that vision in the year ahead. And this time he invited me to co-host that talk with him. Looking back now, I am sure that some of the folks on our team would have been thinking, why is the creative director up there with our CEO doing this talk? But once we got into the rebrand stuff, I'm sure it became obvious. <laughs> Honestly, doing this talk with Nathan was a really big moment for me. I know so many designers struggle to get like the seat at the table for important business discussions or for design to be taken seriously at their company. And then here I am up there presenting to our whole team with the CEO. I don't know, I just felt really proud of that and also really grateful to work at a company where I haven't had to like fight for this at every opportunity. I was also really proud of all of the work that I put into that announcement and getting it right. You know, like setting the scene, building up the excitement. And I especially loved the reveal that I came up with. The value that we offer is really different now, right? To so what we offered even just a few years ago. We help creators convert. Yes, we know this. But we also help them to connect. We help them to grow. We help them to launch, we help them to send, we help them to create, we help them automate, we help them earn. We do all of these things. So what if we were just called Kit? It's got a nice ring to it. The next day at the retreat, I gathered some of the team together for what we call a pre-mortem, which is where at the start of a big new project, we think about what could go really well, what could go really wrong, and what are the things that we can do to make sure it's successful. So we're basically like looking ahead and trying to cover all of the different instances. One of the ideas that someone on the team put on a sticky note was to embrace our company value of working in public 
and bringing creators along the journey. The more I thought about it, the more I thought that is a very interesting idea. We started building a pros and cons list around it. I got more and more excited about it. So I put together a pitch and I pitched it to my boss who is our CRO and also to Nathan. And in the spirit of working in public, I have a few clips from that call that I can share with you. Love it. I'm very, I'm getting more and more excited. <laughs> I, I think that's fantastic. Like what, what got me tipped over from like, oh, this is interesting, risky, I don't know, into let's do it, is picturing the footage of 20 professional creators in a room at Craft and Commerce, like brainstorming and giving advice. Looking through these, I'm just gonna screen shares. Um, I'm not too worried about rebrand fatigue. If we're clearly marching towards a goal and providing updates along the way, like if we go back to the beginning of ConvertKit, which started with the web app challenge, six months building the product, you know, like live blogging the entire thing. Like there's nothing more ConvertKit yeah. kit than, than this, right? It's where we started our first chapter, like where we're starting this new chapter. So they were excited about it too, which made me even more excited. And then something Nathan said to me a few days later when I was talking to him about this idea of rebranding the public again was, you know, you're the one making this decision, right? And honestly, I don't think it hit me until then what a huge opportunity this project was gonna be for my career. To be trusted with a decision as big as how we should run our rebrand process, how we should announce it to our audience, the like stakes for this are very, very high. If you've been following along with my burnout journey, then you might be wondering at this point how I was coping with the pressure. And the wild thing is that the clear vision of why we're rebranding has given me a real sense of purpose. I shared this definition in my burnout video and I was absolutely feeling the like futility in my work last year. Like no matter what I did, I couldn't achieve the standard that I really wanted to with my work. And so even though the stakes are very high with this project, I do now feel like the work that I'm doing is making a difference. And so that's helped. Anyway, back to the decision about rebranding in public. So I decided it was something we were gonna do that would announce our rebrand at our conference, our creator conference, Craft and Commerce in June, that we would make a documentary series sharing our process and we share other bits and pieces like along the way. Um, that way creators could learn from the process of developing a brand when it comes to, you know, improving their own brands or maybe if they're rebranding themselves. Uh, and also it meant that creators could be a part of defining our new brand. So we started documenting the process. With that decided, I moved on to finding us the right agency to partner with. Now, working with an external agency is something that we knew we wanted to do right away. And I was really stoked to get the budget sign off for it. I saw this tweet the other day and I know that I have heard similar from other in-house creatives that I've interviewed in the past, being just like really disappointed when something gets handed off to an external partner. But for us, this just isn't how we feel. At the time, I only had one designer on my team. I mean, I'm a designer too, but I tend to be like less in the tools these days. And as in-house brand and marketing designers anyway, our expertise is honestly not in developing brand identities from scratch. It's in evolving and iterating on them and using them to successfully meet our business goals. And so we wanted to partner with experts on this, people who do this day in, day out to make sure that we have a really solid brand foundation to build from in the years ahead. So there was absolutely zero disappointment in the decision to work with an agency on this, let me tell you. I am thinking of making a separate video that breaks down the RFP, which is essentially like a brief that I sent out to some agencies to get them interested in the project and providing us with a proposal. So let me know if you'd like to see that. But I ran the whole agency selection process and ultimately in April, we started working with, drum roll please, Toto. Check out all of the like incredible brands in their resume. Part of our reason for rebranding is that we want to become a big iconic brand for the creator economy. You know, we've been showing up and serving creators as an independent profitable company long before it was a cool thing for VC funds to invest in, long before it was even called the creator economy, quite honestly. And we wanna like rightfully take our place, you know? So yeah, working with Kodo definitely feels like something that a big iconic brand would do. And I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna share more about working with them in a future video too, but it's been really collaborative. I've been to London a few times to work with them in person and it's just been really fun. Um, the process started off with two weeks of research and immersion where they were like, really getting to know our brand and our target audience. And then we moved into 
brand strategy and developing that. And it was right at the end of that brand strategy phase that we finally told the world we were rebranding. We host a conference once a year in Boise for around 300 creators, it's called Craft and Commerce, and Nathan always presents a keynote. And that's kind of like our Apple event where we announce new features. And of course, this year we were also announcing our rebrand. And so this year I collaborated with Nathan on writing his talk and we spent, let me tell you, hours on this presentation, hours. Because <laughs> as important as it was to get it right when telling our team, it was even more important when telling creators who have much less context into our business decisions. And if you want to know what that collaboration looked like, I actually have some snippets to share with you of us making a few edits to the talk a couple of days before the conference. <clears throat> okay, so I feel like we should solve this problem. First. Yep. There's two ways that this ends up going. One is as the energy builds, like, oh shit, 29%, like that's a lot, this is legitimized. Mm -hmm. And you go, but hold on. And so like tone yep. comes back down. Yep. I think what we need to communicate clearer, there's two things. One is the product philosophy and how we are thinking of Kit as something different from ConvertKit. I don't think that's clear right now. Like what the value to creators is. Um, yep. This slide already introduces the operating system for the creator economy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, you're already doing all these things. And so that's the operating system for the creator economy. Hmm. Um. Yeah. You had something else. No, it's just, it's all right. Um. <laughs> I'd be happy, but it's shit. So. <laughs> so you can build a valuable business on your own terms. Mm. Boom, done. <sighs> now I gotta go work on my own talk. <laughs> this was another one of those times where I honestly felt super proud of myself and felt like I have seriously leveled up in my skills as creative director to be truly collaborating with the CEO on something as important as this, for him to respect my opinion so highly, and also just for me to feel like I did a damn good job. I made great contributions to the process of writing this talk and I felt really confident in where we got to. And then the time came, June 6th, sitting in the back row of the like conference venue as Nathan goes on stage. His talk had started with some like vision setting and some exciting product updates. Um, and it was around here in his talk that I noticed my heart like pounding. And I looked at my watch and my heart rate was like super high, over a hundred I think. And all I was doing was like just sitting still, but it's cause I knew what was coming and I was perhaps equal parts nervous and excited, nerve sighted. And then he got into the rebrand stuff and I was like, looking around the room at creator's reactions as my heart's like, you know, pounding even faster as he starts to build up to it. Cause what we were doing with the talk was creating a sort of like, wait, are they changing the name type of feel to it? And when he got to this part and confirmed it, I just felt this like, <sighs> and then my eyes welled up and I felt really emotional. I think it was a moment for me of like recognizing the hard work I'd put into this project so far. And even though there's so much work ahead, this announcement was like a checkpoint in our timeline. So I felt a sense of achievement for reaching it and doing so well. And yeah, I guess they were tears of pride at the end of the day. The next day at the conference, I hosted a workshop alongside David, the senior brand designer on my team. And this is where we shared more about the rebrand process so far. And if we go back to what Nathan said about rebranding in public. 20 professional creators in a room at Craft and Commerce like brainstorming and giving advice. We were able to have that experience of a bunch of professional creators in a room, sharing ideas and answering questions that were helping us to like validate the brand strategy we'd been working on. But I'll save all of the details of this for another video as well, because this story has been long enough already. It does just feel so good to have the news out there though now, to be able to finally talk to all of you about it and tell you about this honestly career defining experience that I'm currently going through. There is a lot of work ahead and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you along the way. Um, I highly encourage you to go watch the first episode of our rebranding and public video series. I definitely focused this story here on my role in the rebrand and its impact on me. So over there, you're gonna hear more details about like the why and how we're rebranding as well as what some creators think about it. And just in general, I'm really proud of this episode. So I'll see you over there.